Hey, what's up, guys? I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud, and this is another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. We got a very special guest with us today, ladies and gentlemen. We're so lucky to have him. Uh, he hasn't uh, been on set. Uh, yet, I'm sure it will happen at some point this week, but right now we got him here. He is uh, the, the leader of the team, CT All Day Pack. He is a writer, he's a producer, director, content creator, but most important, amazing comedian. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together from Detroit's own Mr. CT. How are you, brothers, man? Good to see y'all, man. Pat, I like the original background. I'm sorry that that, that tear made you change. <laughs> hey, man, get out of here, man. It looked yeah, like I was man. on the moon. That was it great. was so dope. No, it was not dope, man. It's dope if we were making a music video. <laughs> <laughs> is that no? This is uh, more money, more problems. <laughs> <laughs> you read between the lines. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to be in that video so badly when it first came out, bro. Now, I like they had a lot of fun suits. in it. It looked like they had a lot of fun in making that video. I feel like oh. Diddy still wears that suit around the house. Oh, that's a fact. <laughs> He's like the only person who could just wear that regularly. You remember when they were the floating in the air? Person. He's the type of person to make a chick <laughs> role play. And she's like, what are we doing? And he'd be like, more money, more problems. <laughs> more money, we come across. Hey, PT's made a good point. When they were floating, and they were like floating, and they were still able to do these moves. That's actually yeah. pretty impressive. Like, that's already hard enough to do with your feet planted. You know what pissed me <laughs> off about that video? The camera was beneath them. I saw the making of the camera was beneath them, and they had the, um, the waist thing around their waist, and they were being hung like from a ceiling. So the oh. camera was shooting up. And so that's how they had full range of motion because they were basically- Oh, they were pointed the down? They were facing down, like facing the ground. The camera mm -hmm. was facing up. Interesting. You know, the cameos that really annoyed me were like the cameos that don't hold up. Like in 97, <laughs> in 97 cameos, you'd be like, oh man, that's dude from this. But when you watch the video in 2020, you're like, Who the, who's this guy? They made it seem like he was a big deal in 97, bro. And they were always like doing stuff like and that and that doesn't really hold up if you don't if you don't hold up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, was he a football player, a boxer? Who was this guy? Always in slow motion. <laughs> Man. I couldn't pick Loon out of a lineup right now. Oh. Did he is he the one that had the beard and went to jail and converted to Islam? That was Shine. No, Sean didn't oh. have a beard like that. I think that was G Depp. G Depp. It was Loon. Oh no, Loon, Loon was the one that went and turned himself in. No, that was Shine. Loon is the one who became a uh, Muslim after he left Bad Boy. Mm -hmm. And he turned himself in. No, he didn't go to jail. Shine <laughs> is the one who went to jail. No, listen, listen. I Shine it, went to jail for the shooting in the club with him, Diddy, and Jay Z. I mean, uh, and uh, and J Lo. Mm -hmm. Loon, Loon is the one who converted and he felt bad about killing somebody like in 93 and went and turned himself in at the police department. What? That's a true story, bro. He felt bad about killing somebody in like 93 and went and turned himself in. Unfortunately, he felt bad the time that his record stopped selling and then decided to turn himself in because when he was on top, he didn't say nothing. It says he was he, it says he was sentenced to 14 years for conspiracy with intent to traffic one or more kilograms of heroin. I don't see anything. So, about that's drugs. Yeah. Well, may, maybe it was G Depp then. It was one of them. It was one of them turned himself in. Let me let me let me look up G Depp. G Depp yeah. was fish and spaghetti. I was already on fish and spaghetti. I was already on fish and spaghetti. Okay. Make yep. this money. Okay, so that was G Depp um, confessed to a cold case crime, a murder oh. of a Queens man in '93. That's who you're talking about. Yeah. So that's G Depp. G Told Depp. you, Loon ain't going for that. Loon ain't no killer. <laughs> this no is pushing. interesting. It says he said he had attempted to confess twice before, but was previously considered to be under the influence of drugs and incoherent. So you can you can be effed up and and go to the cops and and can uh, like confess to a murder and they'll be like ah you're you're drunk. yeah when they read you Van. your rights they <laughs> like when you are when you're giving a confession they ask you like are you giving this confession of your own free will not influenced by any type of you know drug or alcohol anything like that because um any confession that's taken and a person's under the influence will they not hold up in a court of law 
Mm. So he's like, yes, I'm drunk, but listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> I Hear can't... me out. <laughs> <laughs> then they were talking to a statue of a cop for 20 minutes. And they was like... <laughs> I don't think you're all right here, sir. Take a, take a couple hours and come back when you feel better. This motherfucker won't let me tell. I've been talking for 20 minutes and tell him I killed somebody 93. <laughs> sir, go home, Optimus. You're drunk. What's wild is that he sobered up and was like, all right, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do this one more time. <laughs> I killed him. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'm going to try this one more time. <laughs> Man. This is That's crazy. That's a crazy scenario yeah. but man that just goes to show you man human emotion is so strong he knew he was not going to get off of it they weren't like all right well at least we can close the case now go right. home don't worry about it he knew he was going to go to jail he's still like i gotta get this off my chest mm. i, I could not like there are no well first of all i'm not a murderer but it's like <laughs> let's like, say you started that all wrong let's, my boy. let's start that off <laughs> i am not a murderer <laughs> if someone I would not ever convince, like, because the jail prison sentence isn't going to clean your soul. Like, this is the judicial system. You need to get right with your God. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, but you're going to jail now. <laughs> I wouldn't last a week. <laughs> because you got to think, bro, prison isn't like what we see in TV and movies. This is not casting. You understand? Like when you see movies and TV shows where prisoners are these beautiful people, they're yoked up, all of that, that's casted behavior. Mm -hmm. When you see real life jail, these are the people you like, oh, y'all didn't get the call back. These are the true killers. <laughs> these are the real ones. The real <laughs> these killers. are monsters. Like y'all are the ones you don't even know about. Weird... There it is. <sighs> jail is a, it's an ecosystem and it's an environment. It's a world with their own set of laws. The mm. laws that we govern ourselves by and abide by out here in the free world don't translate there. Like mm. if you if somebody gives you something until you get some money on your books so you can buy more food, when you get your food, you have to usually pay them back double. And if you don't, you get your ass beat. What? Oh, street rules apply. Absolutely. Everything is with interest. Nothing is ever given for free. Nothing is ever what? just somebody looking out. Like when I worked at the jail, that's one of the things they told us is like, don't get, don't ever get comfortable with the students. Don't ever think that they're your friends. If they compliment you too many times, report them. They're going to the hole because what? they're always trying to work an angle. These motherfuckers are professional con men. Not all of them. Obviously, I'm, I'm using a blanket statement, but the ones that are there, they there for a reason, bro. Like these motherfuckers are good at what they do, what? and they will befriend you. Be befriend you, have you drop your guard? Have you do something that you're not supposed to do? Now you're under their will because they oh. have something on you that could get you in trouble. And that's how I heard about teachers getting in trouble for bringing prisoners' family members and, and girlfriends up there on their off days, and them trying to stay in the car and not get seen. Motherfuckers still get caught. Like I heard some stories, boy. Give us up. I just I just gave you one. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. One, one, lady, one lady had uh got you know got got into it with this guy or and had he was she was bringing his daughter up there and his daughter was taking the instructions on how to keep the drugs moving. So that was that's another one. That shit was crazy. And when I first yeah. started working there. I, I told you this story about the chick who had two prisoners on her. One was sucking a titty and the other was finger banging her in the classroom. I told you that story. I like, the story. It was it, it's some shit went down. That but let's let's stick with the with the interest payments. I remember <laughs> my friend told me in high school, he's like, yo, his uncle was in jail. And he said, the rules are if you get to jail and somebody left like a Snickers bar on your pillow, don't eat it. Because mm -hmm. if you ate it, that meant that you sweet. And that they are going to now fuck you. Are we allowed that, to curse? That, I should ask that, that, that might be the rules in that one. I just want to eat it because that means that you took a gift and now you got to replace that. That too. You take that one Snickers bar, that could be, you know, two packs of cookies, three oatmeal cream pies. You never know because the ratio is basically set by the person that gave you whatever. Damn. You know what I mean? So here's, here's the crazy thing you don't know. 
So my boy Mike, who came to the show last night. I don't know any of this. Mike, he's the tall guy. No, I'm talking about the rules of prison. I'm listening. Yeah, I remember Mike. Mike. So Mike went to jail. Mike Mike was in jail, like for real jail. Like I met him when I first moved out here. He was my supervisor at like a a lube shop, like a Jiffy Lube type of Babylon type. (laughs) Had to clear clear that up immediately. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, my name is here. We have all the lubes. We have the water resistant lube. Listen, I didn't even put a, I didn't even put a comma there because I didn't want it to be a break. I was like, what kind of move I get to do? Yo, look no. at my face, bro. This was <laughs> this was Patrick's face. So say lube again. I'm gonna be Patrick. I worked I worked at a lube shop. He was like my jiffy lube. I'm <laughs> <gravel."> <laughs> Oh my god. Yo, I'm sorry to hear you going. You fucked us up with that oh, one. Way. It's the back of your shop. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like cling, cling, cling. Hey, what's up? I'm here. <laughs> 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 cling, 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 cling. <laughs> Welcome to Lube. <laughs> Welcome to Lube, bro. <laughs> This motherfucker has an amazing oh. story, dog. I wish I could get him on here right now. This <laughs> motherfucker basically <clears throat> he got that job while he was trying to finish college. And he, he has a book out right now called Doing Time. I actually ordered it, but he talks about the, the jail system and how it's probably the most racist mm-hmm. and division divided place in America. Like you are either going to be with the blacks or the woods. They call them the peck woods. They call them the whites called or called the woods. And then you also have like the Aryan nation. Mm-hmm. And then you have like the, the Mexican gangs and all of that. And then you got the stragglers. The stragglers are people who just like either old or, you know, they put the time in. So people don't really fuck with them, but more than likely you want that protection. He was telling me about how he went to jail, and then when he went to jail, like the, the they used to make pizzas. And the way they would make a pizza is they would get a pack of top ramen, they would uh put a little water in it, and they would put it under a pillow. They would let the water soften up the, the pack of noodles, and then they would take the square noodles and then like open it up like that. And that's how they would make the that's that was the dough basically. Then they would take ketchup, a tomato paste, put that on it, and then they they could buy like um, sliced pepperoni and cheese and all that stuff. They would make it up like that. He man, the shit that they he told me that they would make, I was like, man, this is fucking ingenious. If you had just use your powers for good on the outside, nigga, you'd be a, a chef at a five star restaurant. Mm-hmm. They would make cakes. They to make cakes like everybody would chip in. They buy honey buns. They buy cupcakes. Hey. All this type of stuff, and then whoever the cook was would mix all of it together and form it and all this type of shit. Like they was like they they live differently there. Like it's the craziest shit I ever heard. And mm-hmm. one thing that I hear from everybody that has been to jail, the one synonymous thing is don't sleep on your stomach. What because you tooting it up? <laughs> <laughs> You 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 are advertising. You were you were saying what's happening. Huh. How do you like okay? So let's say you have a Snickers bar on your pillow and you 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 know you would like to politely <laughs> de- decline. What's the what's the pro do you leave it on the pillow and just leave it alone? Nah, you don't leave it on the pillow. You don't you, I, listen, I don't know for sure. I've never had to deal with these type of circumstances. My guess would be you don't leave it on the pillow, you don't put it on the bar because you leave it on the bar, somebody can walk by and grab it. They walk by and grab it, you still are responsible for it because they somebody left it in your care, they left it in your possession. So you put that shit behind your bed, you put it at the back of your cell, you put it somewhere where it's not accessible to anybody walking by that can grab it because you're going to still be responsible for the loss of that. You still responsible no matter what, and this ain't even my Snicker bar. <laughs> what if they? I mean, how do you, how you know they didn't? You didn't eat it. <clears throat> well, when they come when they come to collect either that Snicker or your booty, you you show them or. <laughs> 
<laughs> or that snicker bar is going to be fully attacked. Whoever wants this thing back, you can have it. <laughs> I'm not touching this, Blake Boy. <laughs> but to hear about the interest, <laughs> to hear I don't know the answer, proceeds to give the answer. trade. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yo, I would be terrified, bro. Like, yeah. yo, I was in jail for 72 hours, right? Whatever, sure. They're like, are we gonna find charges? And I was terrified. I did not sleep on my stomach. I slept on my side. I honestly couldn't even sleep. And then when it was time to use the bathroom, I was like, man, please let this dude leave this cell so I can use the bathroom because I can't do it in front of anybody. And he left. And I was running out of time because you constipated because you got stressed and you're nervous. And I was like, fam, this is not the place for me. The people who can last in there are champions. I'm not wired. Uh, I remember when I was talking to him about it, I was like, uh, I was like, man, if I ever went to jail, I just wouldn't take no shower. I'd be the dirty dude. I'm like, you ain't gonna want to fuck me. I got, I got shit, all that shit. I, I ain't going to the bathroom. I'm just yeah. going like, you can't do that. I was like, why the fuck I can't? He's like, those quarters are so small that they live in, right? And I will say this about them. When I worked at the jail, they were very, very meticulous about their cleaning. Like, they were always mopping, always sweeping, always wiping down the tables. He's like, if you're in jail and you're living in a pod or a cell, your cellmate or the people in that pod are not going to let you stink. They will <sighs> beat the fuck out of you, drag you to the shower to make you take a shower and wash your ass. But you're not going to be in there stinking because now... You're affecting the, the that smell is affecting anywhere from forty to sixty of the people in that pot. Yeah. So they will beat your ass. Never thought about that. And make you take a shower. Wow. It's just not gonna work like that. Man. Wow. Off of you. Beat the huh? musty. Out. So to get the musty beat out of you is kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you can make me wash, but you can't make me put deodorant on, bitch. What are you gonna say? Nigga, wake up, up fresh as hell. Listen, if you if they drag you to, if they drag you to the shower and make you take a shower, you think these niggas ain't gonna stand there and make sure you put on deodorant? Wow, I never even thought about that. It's it's real, bro. He was telling me it, the shit that he told me. I was just like, <clears throat> hey, granted, he he had told me this before I was even working at the jail. So when I went yeah. to the jail, I went in already knowing stuff. So you know, sometimes I'm talking to the class, <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, I know. They be like. This is where you do your time at. I was like, no, nah, no, nah, just talk to one of the homies. He's like, yeah, yeah, sure. You talk to one of the homies. He talked to one of the homies. <laughs> they always got somebody to talk to yeah, to confirm. Yeah, yeah. They was like, where you do your time at, nigga? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, them niggas is nosy, bro. Because here's the thing. So, like, I've heard of people going to jail saying they in there for something else that they they not really in there. When you leave your cell, somebody will go in your cell, find your papers, and find out what you're really in there for. <gasps> Pass that shit around. Not a whole, the whole pod knows your business, what you're in there for. <gasps> and now, nigga, you better have hands because if they try to test you, because here's you the thing, you in there for. You got here's the thing, bro. And this is this is God's honest truth. Everybody has hands to them. You understand? Like Patrick got hands, you got hands, depending on your life experiences but when you in prison they got hands for every fighting style bro <laughs> they fought everybody you can't beat them with outside hands these niggas these niggas know how to fight somebody doing crotch and tiger <laughs> man it's like a, it's like avenger level training in there they, facts it's, it's like they fighting all the best fighters <laughs> It's, uh, remember undisputed i know you remember undisputed with wesley snipes bro oh, when yeah. he was a prison yeah I never thought of it like that. I heard a story of like those, those um, kind of like those juvenile halls where yeah. like you come in and if you act tough, you have to fight everybody and niggas is running like 11, 12 back to back fades. And I'm like, yo, that's that's like Dragon Ball Z. Like, you know what I mean? Like, bro, you guys are you guys are athletic <laughs> with no commercial breaks. Like, ain't no on next time. This is straight back to back. Wow. The crazy thing is, you know how they had. They had, uh, I mean, obviously they got shut down. They had bums fight, bum fights. Those little DVDs going around, nigga. Oh, yeah. They how, had. Hey, how, how did that make money? <laughs> 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 that's crazy. That's not. That seems illegal. Oh, it definitely was. That's why they got shut down. Because what they were doing, they would pay the bums to fight. It wasn't like they was just riding around with a camcorder and looking for two people fighting. They were like, how can you sell that? They were they were hand to hand selling, right? Yeah, you know, they yeah they. Bought, I mean, how hard is it to buy a URL, URL 
get mass production on DVDs. You just go to a place that can mass produce the DVDs, get some graphic I, I I would imagine they would because when they got sued, they want the LLC to get sued, not them personally. Yeah, but can you really start a business about making homeless people fight? You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't tell it as that. Pat, you say, hey, I got this video. Um, I ride around, uh, I ride around with a camcorder, and I catch things on my camcorder. It's this, the name of the company is this, and this is what we do. We provide entertainment. But you're depending on bums to one want to fight. Two, you're depending on the to find another bum to want to fight that bum for this money. <laughs> That's producing. <laughs> See, see, you know what I'm listen, you go down the skid road, you find two guys that are close to each other. You say, Hey, I'll give who, the winner of a fight this hundred dollars. <sighs> who not gonna do it? This is inhumane. Absolutely, it is. Absolutely, Damn. it is. That's why, bro. You know how much <clears throat> technology and, and entertainment moves faster than laws. Which is why they're just now catching up to the dude that did Girls Gone Wild. Yeah. They're going to put this nigga under the jail. How? Wow, what happened? To, to because jail. a lot of those, first of all, they were all you are, you're bribing these women. <laughs> you're bribing these women. I'm sure, I'm sure some sexual favors were handed did out. You, okay. I, I didn't, I missed it. What did he say? What did you say about? <laughs> No, I know that a lot of those girls, like it, it's college, like there's hella girls sneaking in and they did no checks for being ID. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm sure a lot so of that's, those that was gonna be my next thing. thing. You got underage women on these DVD selling them to grown men, that's child pornography. Mm. Ooh. And, and he and he mm. made millions off of girl go girls going wild, like millions. That's the same. Wait, hold on. Isn't Girls Gone Wild uh, uh, Bill Fl the guy from uh, Wolf of Wall Street? I thought he did that. Remember in Wolf of Wall Street, they showed his uh, his downfall. And correct me if I'm wrong. They showed his downfall with the stocks and everything. And then he had another venture after that, which was, I thought, Girls Gone Wild or a version of that. Girls. And was that like at the end or something when they were wrapping it up? Yeah, as they were moving uh, towards the end of the movie. Okay, one of the cats said no. But I was like, he, he did something where he was showing, because I know, of course, he had the book and shit. Mm -hmm. Damn, Snoop Dogg was tied up in all that, too. Man, they yeah. had so many rappers. Yeah. That's crazy. Snoop, Snoop had, a, Snoop had a, uh, a DVD. He had one of the uh, episodes with uh, Bishop Don Juan on there, too. I've really never really seen the full episode, but I used to run the commercials back, hella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't feel bad about it because I was I was underage too. So it's right. <laughs> yeah, that's what you know what's funny. I used to think that like when man, I shouldn't say well, I'm already too I'm too deep into the uh, explanation. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm too deep into that. So, so I used to think when they were talking about the R. Kelly sex tape, because you know, I was literally 13 years old. So they were talking about the R. Kelly sex tape, and they were like, man, oh, this wow. girl got body, and she thick as fuck. And I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to see it, right? And mm -hmm. it was like me seeing it. I'm like, surely I can't be penalized. I'm also a child. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I think it was about the adult that was having sex with her, and like, <laughs> which is like, oh, we're watching something weird. Um, <laughs> whereas Girls Got Wild for a kid is like, boobies. We're like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Damn, yeah, they that, were underage, bro. He said that. They said yeah, he, this is something on is it TLN or CNN. One of them, they they're doing a thing on him right now. Like it's like what? I think a, a three part series on like finding him and making him pay for these crimes. How slow what? are these detectives, though? God damn! <laughs> <laughs> this nigga had already got rich and enjoyed it all. <laughs> she was like the girls. The girls have grown up and had children of their own that are probably sixteen. <laughs> Hey man, it okay. don't matter. They they will come and get you after the fact. TNT, Terrence says it's on TNT. I I saw it. They were they were starting to play it in some spot I was in, and then they switched to a sports, and I was like, ah, I'm gonna have to check that out. Mm. Wow, you were full of information. Shit is crazy. I was yeah, it was a lot of back to back, uh, a lot of back to back stuff. Man. <laughs> You weren't, let me ask you, I never asked you this about, because when you were working in jail, you weren't ever scared, like, going in there? Like, did you have a guard watching the class for you while you were there? You know what? I did not. It was Man. just me and potentially 30 killers in the one room. Um, 
So the saving grace is like, first of all, it's a men's prison. So they, it, it wasn't too many guys like looking at me, looking for me type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, then they know if they did something physical to me, you know, they going to jail. And most of the time, the people that sign up for the school are either really want to get out their, their sale or they, they actually want to try to do something with it. Now, mm-hmm. of course, you know, you got some people that are there who just want to get out their sale and they plan and, you know, just for whatever the hell. But they also know the penalties for, you know, hitting, stealing from, intimidating, any of that type of stuff to one of the workers. You you bounced out of there. You go into the hole, mm. or you know, and or, or worse, they don't want to do that. Or you getting moved around because it was three different facilities on uh, the campus that I worked on. So, you know, you get sent to one of these. One of the campuses. This was South, the South Hall. Nobody wanted to go there. It mm. smelled different in there. The temperature yeah. was always like like colder than the other facilities, mm. and it just had a certain heavy. I don't know. Like it was haunted. Uh, Are you no, it was like a little haunted? It just it felt like that's where dreams went to die. Like it just wow. it did not feel regular. Like every time I came out of there, when I got in my car, I had to pray first before I did anything wow. else. Before I left, I just like God, please keep me the wherewithal to not do anything that lands me in this place. Please remove the energy that may be on me right now before I go home. Like I literally pray every time. I had to go to that facility before I left because the energy was so bad in there. I just didn't want to take any of it with me. I hated working at South. South was. Imagine how they felt and they couldn't leave. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. That's rough. That is rough, bro. No, no, no one talks about the energy of jail. You know what I mean? It's always like the inner workings and the hierarchies, but no one ever talks about like the, how it must feel like, like the actual you know, damn, it must be very heavy. You know what's weird? Like, I talked about the 72 hours. Leaving there, I felt like I needed to go as fast as I could because I'm like, what? If, there's always that feeling of, what if they change their mind? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And you can't leave. Like, mm-hmm. man. So, imagining people who've been there for years or months is crazy, bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm good. I'm good on all that, my body. Obeying all laws, you understand me? Yeah. <laughs> all of them, all, all of them. them. <laughs> Where's the- hey, man, don't don't do nothing illegal in front of me. If, if, if you if you don't want me to know about it, you think I'm a snitch? Don't do it in front of me because I am gonna snitch. <laughs> oh my god! Self preservation is the rule of the land, my boy. <laughs> I am going to snitch. I'm not built for this, bro. I can't go to jail. Listen, I got I got four good punches in me. Damn. In fight. Four. If I don't knock him out in those first four, this nigga wins. By hey, that's me. four good though. That's four a good five. number. That four and that four coming with all I got. I'm holding my mm. breath while I'm delivering them. That's I got one good. punch and a block in me, cuz that's all <laughs> I got. I got that haymaker, and if that shit miss, I got hey man, come on, man. And that's all I got. Bro. <laughs> I got a hey, come on, man. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> if you get past that, hey, come on, man. That's a wrap for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, thank you. Goodness gracious. All right. Yeah, so what we got today, Pat? Let's get into some of these 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 stories because I like them today. Um, this actually one is this one's kind of weird. So um to hear you be getting boats all the time. So this might be kind of weird for you to hear. A tour boat with 26 passengers, including children, just completely went missing in Japan. What? Which is which is kind of wild because I feel like at this point technology is like you would you can't go missing. I could see something going wrong, but shit is still going missing. They say officials are on the search for a tour boat that went missing off the island of Japan. Uh, it was a tour boat, had 26 passengers, including two children. Uh, it was This was early Saturday morning after taking off from the island. They say that the kazoo uh, made a distress call around 1 p.m., um, and it was made after the boat's bow was flooded and it was sinking with all passengers on board. So, I mean, it's missing, but, like, everybody knows where it's at, you know. But they just don't know where it's at. But uh, they say that a whale could have struck the ship, which is a wild guess <laughs> if you don't know where the boat is. Um, but uh, everybody always talks to me about, like, how I'm, why I'm scared of whales and, like, how they don't eat humans or anything. But 
they are still they, they are still monsters. I'm you terrified of large bodies of water. You ain't got to eat humans to cause harm to them. Exactly. And uh, I feel like Moby Dick happened like a lot more than we thought. <laughs> like people really went out there and tried to hunt whales, which is pretty crazy to think about. <laughs> In their habitat, bro. Right. With a, a, a spear, just like. Do you remember? I know, I know T here hasn't seen this. Pat, you're my only hope for this. Have you ever seen the movie The Adventures of Baron Munchausen? And what? Damn it. Uh, the Adventures yeah, of Baron Munchausen. It was a uh, Robin Williams was in it. Uma Thurman was in it. This was like 80s movie, right? And it was basically this guy who who would live through his tall tales. So he'd be telling stories about how when he was in his prime, all these adventures he and his friends had. Similar to Big Fish before Big Fish. And one of the parts of the movie, they um, they got into a boat crash and they were in the water and they were trying to find land and they found this big island. And he's like, oh, there, we're finally safe. We can get to this island. And as they're getting close to the island, this is this like massive rock in the water. And they get close to the island and the island opens its eye and it's this oh, huge fucking fish and they were like oh it's not an island and they you know of course underwater turned into something else but mm -hmm. that from when i was a kid scared the shit out of me about water yeah yo I thinking that. terrified I, I i always thought that like you know dinosaurs whatever would you know when the meteor hit it only killed like the surface level ones yes. but like them deep, deep, deep oceans probably just have dinosaur level shit yes. still going on over there. Hang on, I need to charge. Yes, to hear, I'm telling you, bro. Like he's he's literally talking to my soul. It's like, dog, how would a comet destroy what's in the water? The water would have taken millions of years to refill itself. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That water wasn't even touched. So what's below the uh, the surface of what these tools can't touch as far as like there are certain tools that can mm -hmm. only go a certain distance before they just explode because of the pressure. They still got to be down there, bro. And that's why I don't mess with that water. Hey. I, I, def I definitely, I mean, they're still pulling catfishes out the water that are 300 pounds. It's like, bro, you don't get, you don't get that big. In a couple of years, bro. Like that's, I mean, that, what is it's a, what is it, a giant grouper or something like that? Mm -hmm. Like this fish is the size can get to the size of like a small Volkswagen Beetle, mm -hmm. bro. Like that, no, no, I'm not, I'm not playing with that. Terrible. Hey, you want to hear something kind of creepy? I was thinking Ball. about this the other day. So, you know, angler fish. You know those fish that have the little mm -hmm. light right there, and they've somehow evolved into a point where they can have a literal light that they can turn on and just swim around. Mm -hmm. Like if we're only scratching the surface of what's down there, like between that and that, like that plankton that illuminates and dolphins learn how to like swim with it. Have you ever seen like a dolphin that's like, it looks like it's glowing because they're swimming through that luminescent plankton. Mm -hmm. You never seen those, uh, those like crashing waves that look luminescent and people go mm -hmm. out there to see because the plankton come through and they're like, it looks like it's glowing. It looks like avatar. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. It's, yeah, it's like it's like it's pretty interesting, and, and there's like videos of people walking through it, and it looks like Avatar water. But dolphins learned how to swim through it, and they look like they're they look like Tron dolphins. So I was thinking about it, like between that stuff and anglers figuring out how to do like lights, I feel like deeper down in there, there could be like like literally how they have um, renditions of Atlantis with like lights and stuff like that, and light fixtures. Like they they could possibly have like a bunch of like light tunnels and like buildings down there <laughs> because we've seen them use versions of electricity already it's so. got to be a city bro they have to have a city of some sort because for them to be that deep under the surface why wouldn't they have a reason to come to the surface they got to have a city down there and there's got to be things that are similar to human beings under there that can breathe underwater dino flagella oh I, i'm not going to try to pronounce that but that's what it's called that's what it is <laughs> That's the, the luminous. Bro, look at look at look at this. Look at look at look at look at the scale of this fish. Look at this yeah. person. That's crazy. I have that. Bro, they, oh. they they're huge, dude. That's insane. I don't want to go Goliath anywhere. Grouper. That's where that is. Goliath group, not a gigantic Goliath group. Wow. Like I don't want to go anywhere that where that's a thing. <laughs> like that's in there. That's in there. <laughs> I am I am good, but yeah. 
Um, I don't know, because like this, just you know, to tie it back to this story, like to leave on a tour boat and you just chilling, maybe going to whale watch, and for your boat to sink and like <laughs> where, where, it went missing, like you couldn't even get like a rescue helicopter, nothing. So uh, twenty six people had to deal with just going in and just like trying to stay afloat until they until they didn't, and that is a horrifying way to go. Oh my god! They probably had plans after the whale watching. Like <laughs> whale watching has to end around like two or three. <laughs> that's 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 a scary way to go. They had know. to have plans. I whale mean, watching yeah. ends at two p.m. <laughs> whale watching ain't like a. It's a tour boat. Like that shit ain't happening until ten p.m. <laughs> right. So that that's that's really scary. I don't know. Well, that's like that. That's like that plane that disappeared in Malaysia, Malaysia? right? Bro. 200 plus people gone. Wait, the where's the black box? They can't beacon, bro. Like, that's scary. That, that, that is when people just go missing. That's that's one type of fear. But like, when 200 plus people go missing on a plane with all this technology, find my iPhone was out then. Like, nigga, like. That, but, um, imagine it's your job, like a plane lands in the ocean, and they're like, "To here, find it," and you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> like the like the whole Atlantic Ocean, just like find find this plane. We don't know where it's at. Like that. That's why it's just like, bro. Missing. I you know gave you my my first go to. My first <laughs> go to is, all right, give me a list of the phone numbers and the providers, <laughs> and then I'm gonna contact the providers to see who got an iPhone. You I'm use find your iPhone. I'm gonna just even buy my iPhone. If that doesn't work, I'm out of ideas, baby. That's you're out of ideas. I'm out of ideas, baby. I don't know. I don't so, know so it's a flight full of 200 people. Well, let's say 85 <laughs> of them have iPhones. You gonna try each of the 85 iPhones to see if you can get a signal? <laughs> oh my god, baby. I mean, I mean, I'm a milk, I'm a milk, and I'm a, I'm gonna string it out for about two weeks. But I mean, <laughs> meanwhile, the survivors are on their last flare, waiting for to hear <laughs> finish to find their iPhone. They're like, we're wet. We don't have iPhones. We're wet. <laughs> All I can do is try to take the the phone's last location. Hopefully, somebody <laughs> bought the internet. If somebody bought the internet online on the flight. Then I have the best chance of best chance of locating that last known position. The flight should have internet itself. That's why I'm so shocked that it got lost, bro. It's still lost. Right. Oh, still. Yeah. yeah. They never they, found they that shit. They still never found that. Yeah, they still never found that. That I used to be afraid of Bermuda's Triangle because of that same reason. Like there was always the myth that people get lost. And today, you know, there are a million girls who be like, I'm going out of town, I'm going to Talam or some shit like that. And they go to Bermuda and you'd be like, You're not afraid of the tales? They're like, no. And I'm like, I will never. Wait, what do you mean they go to Bermuda? Like they go to Bermuda. So they'll go to Bermuda because you know it's still an island, you know, so it's part of the Caribbean. So Huh. When people go over there, I'm like, you haven't heard of the tales of the Bermuda Triangle and getting lost, and you're not afraid of that and all of these things. They're like, oh, those are just tales, and I'm like, until they're not. Yeah, but I don't. I, they're not getting on a boat and going across the triangle, right? They're just well, on the island. The planes flying over the triangle even got lost. Like, there's so right. many. Oh, I'm terrified. Yeah, bro. yeah, they say that like the the your compass and your your uh, your equipment doesn't work well there like like the compass just spins around or it doesn't give you accurate readings of your elevation all of that type of stuff has has been known to be connected to the bermuda triangle they have bermuda triangle twilight cruises wait what go, wait they they go in there i'm about to throw it up fellas you lying people are so dumb man <laughs> you're taking a tour of the the place where these ships got lost on a ship, hilarious. What? Sixty-six dollars. You could take this this cruise. How much death cost? Sixty-six. And bro, they got two dollars. You could be they lost. Got, hold on, bro. They they got the see-through glass. Right. Oh, bro, you just see a dead body float underneath the boat. It. 
Wow. And it's glass bottom. Like that matters. Uh, that is crazy. Uh, I'm know, not doing a glass bottom in America, let alone <laughs> in the Bermuda Triangle. The bravest ones are the tour guides and the, the captain because they're going multiple times. That's insane. It's like coming up on your right, a, a storm. <laughs> a crazy storm. <laughs> if I see a tour guide, usually when you go on like tours, you out of country or you out of town, the tour guides let me know if I should be afraid or not, right? Like if these are people who are like really jaded, <laughs> I'm like, all right, it's going to be a cool little thing. But if they seem like everything is exciting, I'm like, this is their first time and they don't know what the fuck about to go on. And if they're mm. scared. <laughs> it's a wrap. You don't see them anymore? You see them putting on... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going for a swim, guys. You guys keep going. I'll meet you at the other side. No, you're not. Nigga. You're leaving us. <laughs> hey, does the Bermuda Tales... Uh, is anything on the island themselves happen? Or is it just with the, the water? Just like, the water. A magnetic... It's like a magnetic... Um, force there or some type of surge there? I, I don't like, know. The, the magnetic force uh, just out of whack there, bro. I mean, hold on. hold on, hold on. I gotta show y'all this. I haven't even read all of it. I just, I just, I just came across this right here. It says Bermuda Triangle, section of the North Atlantic Ocean off North America, in which more than fifty ships and twenty airplanes are say, said to have mysteriously disappeared. Those the area whose boundaries, boundaries are not universally agreed upon. So they don't even know where it starts and stops at, honestly, with the Bermuda Triangle. Sounds like a circle uh, to me. Has vaguely triangularly, <laughs> triangularly shaped, marked by the Atlantic o coast of the Florida Panhandle. 50 ships and 20 airplanes. That's some crazy numbers. That's way more than I thought. I thought, mm -hmm. like, we lost, I thought it was like a couple. Mm -mm. But that's, Bro. that's insane. Why do how how are you the fiftieth one though? Like how, <laughs> that's a lot of that's a lot of mishaps <laughs> to be like you're like it's in the forties and you're just like I'll take this shortcut. I'll and tell you who didn't get in there the fifty first one because he said I'm not doing it. <laughs> like, no no no. <laughs> Trust us. No no no. I'm not going in there. <laughs> that's so crazy when it's. The, your, the ship is so lost, niggas start going uh, like supernatural. Like that shit, that shit's in another dimension. It's like, bro, no, it's in the ocean, but it's, it's, I guess it's choppy, right? That's the whole thing. That's like, here's the thing, man. Movies like Journey to the Center of the Earth are my favorite types of movies because right. they give you the other side of it. It's like, all right, cool. This ship got lost in water. Bet. You go Journey to the Center of the Earth, these ships have washed up and these these passengers who are on it are now living in the center of the earth with dinosaurs and sea creatures and land of the lost type shit. You know what I mean? Like it's believable. That's what that, that's what that movie's about, man. You've never seen it. Uh, -uh. Patrick journey to the center of the earth. Yes. They have two of them. One is with the rock. That's the second one. That's the, that's fire. And the first one is Brendan Frazier. Mm -hmm. You've oh. never Patrick. Uh -uh. <laughs> the like, listen, you got to understand, man, like, you know, Tahir is clearly one of my best friends on the planet, but I know my limitations with Tahir. I know the movies that he's not going to be into. Patrick, I am shocked. I will, I'll watch it today. Trust me. And after you do it, you're going to immediately want to see Journey 2 because it's like, don't look at the special effects. He's 10 years old. Look at <laughs> Just look at the movie. Okay. You know, since you don't age well. When I want to be adventurous and just risk it all. Like, if I didn't have a family, I would probably be more adventurous in doing things like, you know, just go island hopping. Mm. Um, and I wouldn't mind, like, I would love if I was able to swim to go looking for sunken sh ships, like in places where a ship was where you last reported and it was carrying a payload or what, uh, whatever, gold, spice, whatever. I would love to do that in theory. I yeah. feel like as soon as I get my my flipper in that water, though, the the nigga in me would be like, nah, let's just sell dope. I'm so like, <laughs> <laughs> well, you I don't know how to swim? I don't, bro. I know how to I listen. I, at the at the at the at the maximum, I know how to not drown in a sense of I will 
I will figure out a pattern of floating and doggy paddling back to shore or to something that is floating bigger than me. That's what I know how to not do. You always have your shirt off and are on an island somewhere and you don't know how to swim. How many pictures have you seen of me in the water? That's a great point. He audits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He audits vacations. Sell the green, baby. That's what it is. You sell the green, baby. You got to sell that. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 you know why crack doesn't isn't sold in packages because what? they have to list all the shit that's in it. You be like, I'm not putting turpentine in my body. Turpentine. I'm not going to do with that, that don't even sound right. So Yo. no, you never see uh, crack packaged up. <laughs> With the nutritional facts at the end. Also, the FDA is not going to approve anything for people to consume crap. Vitamin A, zero percent. Vitamin D, zero percent. Crack, one hundred percent. One hundred percent crack. I can promise you, this is one hundred percent crack. (laughs) (laughs) Ain't no juice in here, but this this crack is one hundred percent. Sodium, one hundred percent. It's interesting. You never I can, listen, man. I'll tell you about swimming because I'm not the guy that you know. I'm not a pool shark, but I I do enjoy swimming. And bro, it's it's something that you definitely have to teach yourself different techniques outside of the doggy paddle because that's going to exert you faster than any other style of swimming. CT, do you swim in the ocean? Yeah, mm-hmm. I've swam in ocean, of course, pools, lakes. I I'm scared. I'm more afraid to swim in lakes than an ocean though because really? at least in an ocean to a certain length out there by the beach you got some distance before some crazy shit happen in a lake you don't know if there's a croc or a gator or um same thing you know some sort of, but it's different it's like wow. at least if you put your toes in the water you are at you could you from anything from a jellyfish to a little tiny poisonous thing to a shark mm-hmm. you, can, you can get it all <laughs> Damn, never going back in now. But I I remember, that's that's why I hate the ocean. Because when I went, uh, when I was a kid, I was on this beach just playing in the water, and then mm-hmm. I got back to my hotel, and there was a warning, and they were basically a helicopter was uh, following this giant sh- uh, shadow of a shark that was basically like patrolling the the spot that I was just playing in, and and, and everywhere else. But I was just like, oh, that's what I understood, like. The beach ain't like a joke. Like when you're in there, everything else is in there too. <laughs> and there is no, you think that there's just like a, a tower or it's like a, somebody swimming out there, like checking to see if any yeah. sharks are coming. But nah, it's just, it's just water and ocean and anything can come up. I didn't know that. Yeah. Listen, anytime you go in the ocean, you're, you have an unprotected sex with a new partner. You understand what I mean? <laughs> You're throwing your dick on the crap table, and and most times, most times, you, you you're gonna break even. All right, but every now and then, the house is gonna win. <laughs> you know what? There was an episode. I'm man. I'm so quoting all of these science fiction. I was watching the episode of Ghostbusters, the animated series. Once this terrified me about uh, showers a long time when I was a kid. It was the episode of Ghostbusters, the cartoon, and this guy was taking a shower. And from the drain came like this, of course, ghost uh, monster fish that popped up from the drain and ate him. And I was like, well, looks like baths are only going to be for me because the shower wow. wasn't even a safe place. Damn. It took years Here's for me to take a shower. Though, the bath, like you're, you're all, you have your body is already submerged in water. If, mm-hmm. if the spirit can come through the drain of a shower, he can come through. He, you think that little cork? Is gonna stop him from getting in their bathroom. Oh, now I, I gotta go pull your ankles down and then drown you. The I was eight. I thought I was safe. It's just to take a whole bath, get a little water in that sink. <laughs> a little water in that get a sink. Water in that sink. Hit the hot spots and then go outside with the sprinkler and do the rest. You understand? No. Like, Listen, here's the thing. So <laughs> when I did the tour with the with the, uh, I, I was on a rock tour. I was on the Vans Warped tours. All. Uh-huh. All rock bands, I'll turn into bands, I'll pop bands on it. Like they to hear was more aggressive. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, fucker. <laughs> To hear Guns N' Roses needs you. All right. <laughs> 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 
All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sometimes the venues had showers, sometimes they don't, because sometimes the venue is just a big ass lot. And mm-hmm. so, knowing this, people would go and they would have um, these portable showers, which is basically like this big ass bag, which is like a mini water bag, water mm-hmm. bag. And they would leave it outside in the sun all day so it would heat. And then they would connect the hose to it. And that's how they showered. They would shower with swim trunks or uh, bikinis or swimsuits on. And that's literally how they showered for an entire fucking summer. Mm-mm. Where'd they get the, the original water from? They were like, so when we get to the venues, they have like hookups for you to get water because all the uh, tour buses uh, had to refill on their water too. Mm. But uh, this, they would just do that, bro. They Mm-mm. they would let, they would be told where the water area was. They would refill it and they would leave the fucking bags outside their bus all day to get heated by the heat, Mm-mm. by the sun. And this is how they took this. I remember one time we were in Miami and it started raining. You know, it rains on and off of Miami. So it started raining. This is after we had packed up. Everybody's chilling out by their buses. They got the chairs out doing the barbecues. They would have big barbecues every night. Got the barbecue going on, sitting in the stores raining. And people were like lining up to like either try to take showers in the venue or sometimes people, they would rent a hotel that was close by, but it didn't happen awfully. And then people would take the van and go to the hotel. But it started raining and people just started washing up outside. Mm. Oh, in the rain? In the rain. Mm. Yeah, that's and like that's kid, basically why I didn't smash anybody on that tour because I took a shower on my bus. <laughs> but I was a tour manager, so I was the only one that could do it because there wasn't enough water for my team to take <laughs> a shower on ever. But I took my showers on the bus. You ever th- you ever used to think that like when it rained, you're you get like a free car wash, and then the next yeah. day you walk out and your your car's even dirtier because yeah, like, like rainwater is not clean no <laughs> Which all is- the pollution in the air is in those clouds the atmosphere is full of pollution and so that rain wow. is not coming down as crisp and clean as you think so on this tour because here's the thing you're talking to a guy that moved to la on some homelessness you understand couch surfing all of that mm-hmm. i went and got a gym membership so i could take showers at these gyms yeah. Nobody on this tour thought, you know what? Let me go get a hotel room or go to a gym and shower. They they resorted to getting a water bed to take well, a shower outside. Here's the thing. So I worked the tour as a, as a manager and my, my team, they were doing the executions all day. So mm-hmm. we'd roll in, set up early. You know, the setup would be like seven in the morning. A team, they work from basically whenever doors open, which would be like eight or nine until about six or seven. Right. Mm. So one, you don't have any time to go get a gym or go to a gym or go find a hotel. Two, you don't have any transportation. We're moving around on buses. The bus isn't going to go <coughs> to go around town looking for a hotel for you to do it. So and then a lot of times the venues were in remote areas. So it's not close to like the major cities or the, the major city might be you know, 30, 40 miles away because you need all this big land for all these. They had three stages, tons of merch pop-ups, uh, food vendors and all that. So you need enough space to house. It's basically a small city. So most venues didn't have the space for that. We would be in remote areas or big ass parking lots and shit like that. So it wasn't, and you didn't have transportation. What was the money? Let's let's talk about the money because I always find time to wash my ass. So what was the money to where these people are committing to not washing their ass? Well, here's the thing. If you were a band on there, you had to be approved to be on the tour mm-hmm. and you made your mer- money from merch sales. You paid to be on the tour. Let's let's get that straight, first of all. Mm-hmm. Vans Warp is a brand in itself. We're talking about Vans the Shoes. Uh, so the tour... Vans was paying for everything. No, you could you could like buy like a meal plan so you can get you know your food and all that type of stuff, but you you paid to be there. That's how that's how the company made money and the bands wow. made money. The Even the big the big the big bands made money, like when the Paramore was there, uh 303, uh you know, the big bands they got but the smaller bands, the up and coming and indie stuff like that, they paid to be on the tour. 
Okay, that makes sense. And so Vans was making money from them, and Vans was making money from ticket sales. Mm. So you had to hustle to really get out there to sell your merch. You know, I said, do a good job performing. Hope people go to your merch stand, hit that up. You know, get your your email blast up and all that type of. That's how you profited from that as a small. Now, me as a tour manager for these people, I was getting paid nicely. But then again, I was taking shower on the bus. Mm. That's crazy to think that all those rock bands were low key and musty this whole time. Oh my god! It seems uh, it makes sense though. I remember. I'm definitely gonna throw him under the bus. I remember I was on a tour, and we went to one of the comedians' hometowns. Right, so we were staying at this comedian's parents' home in this city. Right I'll now, like I told you, what'd you say? I'll text you afterwards. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, I'll tell y'all even after we finish this. But uh, we were at this comedian's parents' house, right? And like I said, I always find time to wash my ass, bro. So I take a shower. He tells us what time we have to be ready. I take a shower in his upstairs guest room. I'm solid. I come downstairs. Both of my comedian friends are still in their same clothes. I'm like, hey, y'all, are y'all going? Are y'all going to take a shower? You know, this is your parents' house. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just give me like five minutes. I'm like, yeah, your body, right? <laughs> Cut two. He goes in the bathroom, comes out like seven minutes wow. later. I don't see no shower steam. I said, hey, man, I don't know why I was so invested. Also, I don't know why I was so invested. But I was like, hey, man, <laughs> you didn't take a shower. He's like, no, nah, I just took a uh, I just took a bird bath. I was like, a bird bath? And he's I like, yeah, I just hit the hot spots. I Bye. say, <laughs> you're in your parents' home, bro. If I got time to take a shower, you got time to take a shower. I had to hit the hot spots. He hit the hot spots. Both these niggas took bird baths, bro, and I was disgusted. <laughs> to this day, I don't Ooh, trust bro. their hygiene, bro. It's 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 a, it's a lot of guys that I could never live. I just lucked up because I met Felix on that tour. Mm. Felix was one of those people that was taking the the, the baths outside and with the shower bag mm. and all that stuff. But when we got back to the crib. All that shit was out the window. Like I was, <laughs> I'm very particular to the point where, like, I'll ask him, "Hey man, you took a shower in a couple of days?" He was like, "Oh yeah, I took it." When you were asleep, like I was like, "All right." When you were asleep, I don't trust that. When you were asleep, no, no, no. He, he he was he was on it. He was on it because we both were we very clean people, but uh -huh. I'm meticulously clean. I'm like, like I like when he did the dishes, I would look at the dishes to make sure he didn't. Cause he would wash the dishes in our kitchen. Uh -huh. You remember my, my old place to come? You come in. It's the living room right here. It's the little dining yeah. room. And the kitchen was kind of in a kind of cove, cove type of area. Uh -huh. And he would wash the dishes with the kitchen light off, just going from the the light from outside. Well, you know mm -hmm. we had no bushes on the side that didn't let a whole lot of light in. It was just mm -hmm. enough to be visible. You don't hit your knees on cabinets and shit like that. And I'm just like, hey, stop washing the dishes in the dark, baby. You not. <laughs> You hitting the hot spots of the goddamn dishes. I need, yeah. I need all of this to be clean. So unacceptable. I'm, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't do that shit, baby. I had a cousin who would hit me with that when you were asleep. I took a shower. Bullshit. Like this was the cousin. Yeah, they I had roaches, huh? Okay. <laughs> Why do they keep saying when you were asleep? That's what I'm saying. Like whatever people say, because like my cousin, oh, I was almost said his name. Uh, let's call him Mike. I'll be like, hey man. Like I'll wake up, get in the shower, and he's like, all right, let's go outside. And I was like. Did did you take a shower? And he's like, I took one you were asleep. And I was like, I was the first person to wake up. He's like, no, no, no. I went back to sleep. And I was like, this nigga is nasty. Like, I just knew he was lying. And one of my aunts, she came downstairs and she was like, she was like, Mike, uh, you trying to go to the bike store? Did you, did you wash your ass? And he was like, no, ma'am, not yet. And I was like, I knew this motherfucker was lying. So then she said, you over here trying to go all around the city, go wash your ass. Then you could go outside. And I was like, that's a shame. Your mama got to tell you to wash your ass. I don't get it. Like, does anybody else think showering is fun? I love I really, it. I really enjoy showering. Like, it, it's, good. It, it's nice. It's a good time. <laughs> it's like a little break. <laughs> like a bunch of it's good a ideas. little break. <laughs> get a bunch of good, good thinking in. You know, mm -hmm. um, some singing, possibly put on a concert. I, I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm hitting all the high notes in the shower. Even oh, yeah. with the kid, like kid, like I, I just see it with her. Like she's getting better with it. But before, you know, I mean, we have to fight her tooth and nail to take a shower. I'm like, that's your ass. That ain't my ass. My ass smells wonderful. You know, depending on when you catch me. <laughs> but it's clean every day, baby. That's your. Why I gotta fight with you to keep your ass clean? I don't understand this. 
you don't and it's, I think it's I know this is going this specifically is going to sound crazy, but it's real. Girls have to be cleaner than boys because girls have innies that contain juice. Boys just got outies. You got to keep that thing clean. Let me tell you something. Innies that contain juice. I'm telling you, man. Let me tell you something. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Listen, while, while I can agree with girls have innies, I can still also say them outies hold a lot of stink. Uh huh. Them ball sweat. Uh, you got your balls pressed up against your thighs with your shaft pressed on top of that. All of that is in them draws all day. You're running. You're playing sports. You're playing a pickup game or 21 or tips or something like that. Hey, nigga, you stink. Okay? I've never understood. I've never, ever understood guys that that leave the club after, after doing shit like this for three hours Mm-mm. and be like, expect the chick to just give you head. And, I, and 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 the women that do it, I just be like, well, Charlie, where your mom at? I need to talk to the ladies in the mm-hmm. family. Somebody didn't put enough respect in your life because you got to tell the nigga no. It's just a little sodium. <laughs> Listen, if this if this bitch sucking your dick and her ankle swell up and she died, that's on you because she didn't got uh. too much sodium. No, nah, it's, it's like you know how some people like uh, sea salt and vinegar chips. <laughs> they just want the. You know what, bro. In my single days, I literally would say, "I here will be my thing. I was not going to immediately try to have sex with a girl at a club if I saw her dance more than two songs. Because after two songs, that sweat started to drop on that body. You understand? Wow. Now we got a whole different thing. If you dance more than two songs, dance your heart out. That means when we get to my crib, you taking a shower. And mm-hmm. I had a young lady that she came over one time, and I remember her. I said, hey... Here's your washcloth and your towel for your shower. And she said, You're gonna make me take a shower? And the first thing I said was, Make you. You should want to take one. You danced eight songs. I watched you. <laughs> and she went in there and bird bathed herself. She came out, I kissed her neck. All I tasted was the salt chips. You understand? <laughs> you tasted 11.25 on this bitch. Man. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is disgusting. Man, I I pride myself on smelling nice, bro. I will not ever not be in that shower. You understand? I don't care if we left, went somewhere, or we just sat down for three hours. When we get back to that crib, if you're trying to touch on this thing, I'm getting in that shower. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it's got to be, baby. That's true, though. I mean, it's like no one, no one <sighs> wants salty balls. <sighs> That's a t-shirt. <sighs> No one's salty balls. I can't, man. It's just so disgusting. Because when you look at people's movement, also, we haven't even factored in size. If you are a man that is more than 240 pounds, you got to hit that shower on a regular, brother. Not just one shower that day is going to do it. You understand? Now, if you're a brother that's under 190, you might be able to escape with one shower a day if it's not you being in the sun all day. But come on, man. You got to get it together, man. (laughs) Yeah, I never thought about it like that. I hate sweating though. I just yeah. I don't like sweating, which is why I'm not very athletic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just I would I would much rather shower and stay clean than like one. At, <laughs> at, 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 at my age now, like we got legs. Before me and Fran get busy doing anything now, like I need to take a full body shower because I like to put feet in my mouth. Okay. Oh God, this took a turn. I need everything. <laughs> I, I'm gonna buy your butt cheek. I might bite your shoulder blade. I get on some freaky shit when I get sex drunk. Shoulder I need blade. that whole body clean. You understand me? Shoulder blade. Whole body clean. Wow. Have you ever uh, tasted a dirty shoulder blade where you just like, yeah, hey, you got it? Could shower. be salty. It could be salty. Here's the thing. I don't want to taste a whole lot of lotion either. You get out that shower, you come right to this bed. Now we're gonna air dry like we're supposed to. We take another shower after we're done, then you put your lotion on. I ain't trying yeah. to have a mouthful. You ever go to suck a titty and it ain't nothing but Victoria's Secret lotion all on that titty? Now your mouth got a film. You got a film of lotion on your tongue. Yeah. You take that for the, the entire smash session. You know, I don't, don't don't put no lotion on. Just come to this bitch. I'm, I'm going to give know. credit. I'm going to give credit to my wife. I've been with her over a decade. I've been with her for 12 years. Not once have I ever caught her funky. And not once have I ever tasted no salt on her. I will give her credit. That's wow. a hell of a record. 
That's a very good record. That's I'm telling you, bro. That's 100. percent Man, but to hear you just you just straight out the sock. You got it in your mouth. I, no, I, 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 I didn't say so. That's I said. That's why you got it. We got to watch that whole body there. Okay. Okay. Because Respect. I, I mean, I, in, in like our house shoes, we don't like just do flip flops here. We do like the the the, the ones with the hair on them. That's so that you 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 feet got to be clean on the way from the bathroom to the bed. I, I don't want no carpet toe in my mouth. I want fresh toes in my mouth. All right. Carpet you know toe. I need that. I need that big toe. I'm gonna go to work on that big toe. Hey man, thank y'all for having me, bro. This is uh, <laughs> so honored to have been able to do the show. <laughs> Clearly, I am out, but uh, you know, man, bottom of my heart, thank you for letting me come on. Whew. <laughs> Damn, to hear is scary. It's what this shit is about to be. Sheesh. God damn. <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. Yes, Autumn J. Autumn J said to his said he wants his clean up unseasoned and unmarinated toes. Yeah. Man. I want I want my toes like white people chicken. I want that shit unseasoned, <laughs> tasteless. Boy. You understand me? I want water all in the smoke. And with the skin on it. You know, skin. <laughs> I'm sorry, nah, I'm good on the toes. I'm so, toenail polish off that toe. Yes, All man. right. This is oh, quite that's enough. That's gross. That's just gross. And dangerous for you. <laughs> that's poison that you got inside your body. I don't give a fuck how fine she is. That is poison. Yeah, I think you got acidic <laughs> saliva. <laughs> <laughs> you got toenail polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You produce that like venom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like that scene on Don't Be a Menace when Sean <laughs> Sean was uh was eating um dashiki stoves and he had like hot sauce on her. I was disgusted oh, as a child. No, no. That <laughs> actually, to hear having meals. That actually that scene turned me off of feet. <laughs> but hey, I mean um oh wow, love a good salt rim. Is that the <laughs> Oh my god! I just saw that one too. Living my Jeff life, you wild, bro. <laughs> Little Tahin. <laughs> nah, I'm, you know what's crazy? I tried the whole. I thought food. I thought food in the bedroom was tight in 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 college, and I tried it a few times. It's horrible. I I I do not like. It's whole, sticky after. Oh, the whole chocolate sauce thing. I remember. Come on, man. <laughs> no one ever talks about that uh, chocolate sauce. <laughs> Listen, I got I got over that in college. I was like, I am running. It's not sexy linens. at all. It immediately. I'm, running, I'm, listen, like it. I'm washing linens, and this is before I had got the washer dryer in my apartment. But I'm I'm at I'm at the I'm at the laundromat with brown stains on my sheets. <laughs> the now visuals. The Bad visuals fun. were just not where I needed them to be. So I said, right, we got to let this go, baby. We got to hey. let this go. We got to put some towels down. Oh. And, and I don't, I, listen, I ain't got enough money to buy that many good towels, okay? Mm. So well, I got it. We got to <laughs> Let me ask y'all a real question before we get up out of here. Tell me, this seems mischievous by the look on your face. <laughs> this is so mischievous. Look at this nigga's face, Pat. It's really uncomfortable. <laughs> And the fact that chocolate what? sauce was the transition. <laughs> how do y'all how do y'all feel about toys in the bedroom? All right. Uh Patrick, you go ahead first, brother. Um I used to okay. This is this is this is pretty gross. I would never, I, I remember you talking about this story already. I would never do this now. I would never do this now. But when I was in college, I didn't know better. I had like a like a, a wand thing for the ladies, and I would just, I, but I had one, so I would like wash it, <laughs> use it. Just, it was a, it was a public. <laughs> it was, a, it was a community public, wand. It was a community vibrator. It was a, uh, it was, um, it was like you know sanitized for COVID reasons. Not this, was a, this, was long, this was a long, this is a long, long time ago. Um, but no, I, I would never do that now. But I do like. <laughs> I do like the 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 help. I think it makes it uh, as long as it's for them. I don't, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't do like the rings or anything 
Oh, you don't? I've never, I've never tried it, but yeah, I've never. It's it, all the toys would be like for the woman. Hmm. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's the thing. <laughs> toys. Never mind the assistance. Um. Here's the thing. It's a double edged sword because with my lady, she doesn't do any of the toys. She's not into that. She just like, you know, she like that young elephant trunk. Bam. Here we go. Um. Other women in the past. I've smashed and they might have had. I remember one time, this is the closest thing to me having a toy used. She had a vibrator and she would vibrate herself while I was thrusting her from behind. So I felt the the vibration on my balls. And I was like, wow, this is this is weird. And I found a way to get into the rhythm of my stroke with the vibration. And it was it was pretty dope. But um I've never huh. That's that's what they call an aftershock. I like how you worded that. Uh, so I've never used toys like that's not my thing, but it's like if that has been the ladies' thing, we did that. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not gonna be bringing no toys, I don't need no cock ring. I've heard mm -hmm. too many margin for error stories. Oh, that, that no. those things go wrong, huh? Those things, what, what happens with those? Yeah, I've heard the cock rings get stuck, I've heard uh, stuff just got crazy, man, but I have. Like I said, had that girl use the vibrator and I felt her vibration and I was like, this is pretty cool. But uh, yeah, so it's here. I'm assuming that you are Toys R Us and or KB Toys. I've always been a, I've always been a fan of the toys in the bedroom. All the right. uh, I've had, you know, restraints, had this X restraint that went underneath the mattress. He had one on each side, at the top and the bottom. So you can have the person like that fully sprawled out. Uh, all the toys. Place. And uh, the only thing that you guys didn't ask is what Talia asked. She's like, is it toys for men or for women? <clears throat> I recently picked up this uh, this new thing right here. This is uh, it's, uh, it's like a cup of ice. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. So the top comes off. Bottom comes off. And, uh, you know. You fuck that thing. <laughs> <laughs> is that the is that the the mic drop? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you a wild boy. <laughs> what is it? Is is it's a fleshlight. Oh. Why why is it not flesh? I got one of those. It, well, it, not that, it, but a flashlight. It, it, the the gelatin type of material, gelatinous material, is what the flesh is referring to, referring to mm. uh, on this one. And uh, okay. I was I was I was drunk or high uh, a couple weeks ago, and I ordered it off of Amazon. I was like, <laughs> I've never had one. Let's see what this is like. Hmm. Uh, I can report that it's pretty cool, man. <laughs> you know, it's, it's you can do things with it that you can't do with a regular woman. You could, uh, you know, you know, obviously the stroke, the up and down, but you no, know, from the grip, you can also do a little twirl with it too. And it was, uh, it was, it was interesting. It was an interesting, uh, yeah. You could probably do like, I wonder if you can put it on like a like a drill, like like so that it rotates by itself, and then you could do a handstand and. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. See, this, this is what happens when I try to let you guys in, man. When I try to no, I'm just here. saying, get, get creative with it because it's not it's not a full woman, so you can do a bunch of like. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild as hell. What, and it's literally called the flashlight. That yeah. looks like the 2022 version. That's like the. It, it, it completely like, comes. Yeah, yeah. This one is. Uh, uh, this is the the flashlight vantage quick shot, you know. The quick shot. <laughs> it's a great name. <laughs> just just gonna do a quick shot, quick shot right now, and then. Yeah. I got a flashlight when I was doing a show on Playboy. Uh, Misty Stone brought uh, her. I guess it was uh, molded from her vagina and, mm -hmm. you know, she like, you know, sponsored and she was selling them and she's like, here, I want to give you this as for having me a guest on your show. And I was like, thanks. And it took me like five uh, weeks 
to use it. And I was like, let me try this thing. Tangerine was like, use it. Let me see. How, see, I want to. And I was like, all right. Let me tell you something. Uh, why did you, why did it take you five weeks? What was happening? Because there? you know, I was I'm not I've never used toys. I was just like gonna have it as a uh, as a gift you put in gift places. And then one day, Tange was like, "I'm going out of town." I was like, "Well, let me see what's going on with this thing." Really <laughs> <clears throat> let me tell you something. Me and that flashlight are still together to this day. You understand me? <laughs> that flashlight <laughs> that got moved into my home. <laughs> Got a spare room and everything. That flashlight is here to stay. See, all you got to do is just start the conversation. Me and Farron have, we started a new year of our Patreon, and it's like for <laughs> at the dark conversations. And basically, we order stuff off of a rated intimate. It's a black owned sex shop. We order stuff off of rated intimate. And then, right after we finish, we just go live and talk about it oh. and tell people what they should do. And my whole goal is, is one, to normalize sex talk, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Talk with your partner, tell them what you like, the type of stuff that you don't like, your hard nose, your hard yeses, and also the things that you're interested in, but also just to like make toys, make men more comfortable with admitting that we like toys or we're interested or we wouldn't mind trying something. Cause like a lot of guys, are like, I ain't trying no fucking toys. Like, nigga, this shit right here was the best $17 I spent this year. <laughs> it was great. It was great. So, you know, just normalizing all that type of stuff, man. It, you know, makes a difference, baby. Makes a difference. Whew. Uh, yeah. Um, thank you, man, for having me. This is uh... a... <laughs> you <laughs> so gonna expand fun. that mind, man. You gonna suck some toes, you gonna eat some ass. You gonna expand your mind. Oh, here's the thing. I haven't said that I haven't sucked a toe. I was... Here's the thing. This is what you gotta understand, man. I, first of all, I'm not a fan of the word feet. Like that just sounds disgusting, but toes, no problem. I'm always looking at a woman's toes to see if they're beautiful, if they look jagged or raggedy, whatever. Tangerine has the perfect fucking set. You understand? And I love hers because I know how she cleans her body. I trust her hygiene. I like when she rocks the white polish. You understand? Mm -hmm. But I have seen some, some situations where I'm like, ugh, it's some guy tasting that. You know what I mean? I'm like, that looks disgusting. So I'm never judgy. I'm just telling you my ladies are the only ones that will be upon these lips. You understand? Oh, good times, man. Yeah, man. Good times. Yeah. It's about that time, man. I think they got enough. We got enough hot takes for this If we're here for another 30 minutes, the here is going to say some wild shit. It's time <laughs> to go. You're you, 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 not wrong. You're not wrong because I'm already feeling myself. I just took a little something. As soon as I get off of here, yeah, you gotta go outside. Hey, listen, go outside. Go to you go say to the you pool. Just took a little something during the show. <laughs> like we we got different sponsors now. So the video I just put up, uh, the pink health thing. Oh, this oh, is like yeah. um, this is like blue chew, but like from a black person, and uh, it's oh, kind of nice. crazy, Pat. It's kind of crazy. So, uh, wait a minute. Keep this move. I didn't dodge an ass eating question. Let me tell you something, man. See this? Tangerine has been eating from the rooter to the tutor. You understand? That's all you need to realize. And I perfected it. Now I don't need to do it again. Now, uh, <laughs> um, perfected it. I perfected it. It's out of there. <laughs> the hair is feeling X rated. Let me tell you what I know you popped it. I'm going to say this so you can end the show. I know you popped whatever you popped the minute you were like, hey, let me ask y'all something. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> he is activated, boy. I know what this is. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I popped it before then. I popped it before then. I popped it a little earlier so I could get primed and ready. <laughs> well, let's well let's uh, bid our fans adieu. <laughs> the the brand uh, Lord Nameless is if go to Pink Health's on uh instagram you'll see that oh you go to my my instagram page right now we just put a video up uh, they got stuff for men and women women they got one that gets the woman super and that was a great impression trust me it's it's, it's a good time man you know normalized sex man we out here <laughs> <laughs> we out here <laughs> Here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, all right, y'all. Oh, all right, man. Well, uh, first of all, I want to thank our special guest. We only got in one story. We got we got yeah. one story. Out. Good story. Boat sank. 
niggas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I want to thank our special guest, uh, CT, for popping up, man. And also, check uh, shout out Team CT all day for pulling up and in and, and here with us. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed your stay. You know what I'm saying? You guys are always welcome to pull up. CT, you are always welcome. Anytime, you, brother, pull up. Anytime you want to. We got to get you back on another episode so we can uh, <clears throat> actually get you in the studio. Yeah. And, uh, of course, shout out to the Scary Squad, man. We love y'all. Appreciate y'all. I uh, had a great time with y'all yesterday. Uh, the next movie is going to be Pan Man. We we, we, we yeah. got to get that. We Pan got Man. to get into that one. Uh, we watch horrible movies now. We're, we're on our movie matinees. Yesterday we watched uh, <laughs> Velocipastor, and it was uh, it was an absolute joy. We have you talking about that. You, you should, should check it off if you have Prime. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, man, thank y'all so much for watching. I'm to hear more. Come back to cloud. And we'll see you guys later on another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Peace out. Later, guys. <laughs> <laughs>